thing I want to clarify is that with supercentenarians, now we know this at this point, all of them have lifespans of 110 years or more. One thing that I think we haven't talked about too much is their health spans. And almost all of them last over a century. Let's define this. When we talk about health spans, 95.7% um, of supercentenarians who we have data on were able to stand unassisted at age 100. So we talk about going backwards, that's kind of the start of it, looking at their, you know, their shape at age 100. If somebody's bedridden at 115, I guarantee you they were ballroom dancing at 100, even still, because they're alive at 115. Their health spans last a very long time. And so looking at standing, you know, the 95% number, that's for standing unassisted. 10 years later, it's not so hot. You know, 50.7%, a bare majority can stand either with or without aid. But still, that's pretty good. And it's especially good at 100. And so the point is this, that you know, we talk a lot about the science of life extension. And I think that this is a little more broadly relevant. One way or another, we have a population where elder care is going to be our primary concern. Right now, that's demographic trends. We have aging populations. Maybe tomorrow, maybe in 10 years, we hit longevity escape velocity, and then we have a lot of us living a very long time. Uh, and with these supercentenarians, their quality of life lasts a very long time. Think about you know, aging facilities, nursing homes. It's, it's not too common to have folks move in and live there for 30 years. Um, sometimes those things are, you know, those places are seen as almost a punishment. We're putting you to the side. But these folks find ways to enjoy their lives, and we want to learn, um, you know, from them. And what, this is the, uh, typically we don't share data on, on living individuals. You know, this, this lady is very much living, uh, Ms. Elizabeth Francis there in the center, who is the oldest living person in the United States. And here, here's what's really interesting. So on the right-hand side is her daughter, Dorothy Williams, 95 uh, and on the left-hand side is Ethel Harrison, her granddaughter. And I want you to look at, at her on the left in the glasses, because this lady is the most accomplished caregiver in the entire world. And here's what I mean. She was a nurse for 40 years, but these two ladies next to her, her mom and her grandmother, 95 years old, 114, both of them are living at home. And so that, that granddaughter is 70 years old, doesn't look like it, but what we need to do is look at how can we make life easier for her also? We talk about the sandwich generation. Somebody takes care of their parents and their kids. Imagine her She's taking care of her grandmother and her grandkids. And so we look at this as not being just applicable to supercentenarians, but also to those taking care of them. And that's gonna be very important as there are fewer caregivers in the world because of trends, we need to make people be able to do that easier and better. Um, so I'm gonna share some data samples and this is gonna be from the, what we call the biographical data and lifestyle data and this is you know, very early, this is barely even scratching the surface, but just real quick to define the population. One, all the people in this data, which is anonymized, are deceased uh, in compliance with ethical guidelines. Um, but when we look at 200 oldest people ever, 100 oldest women ever, 100 oldest men ever, when somebody becomes a supercentenarian, their mortality rate's about 50% year to year. We're looking at the elite of the elite, so to say, when it comes to the Olympians of aging, which is what they are. These are the the gold medalists, um, very much so. But you know, it's not the same group. If you're looking at this saying 200, 100, 100, the 200 is actually 192 women and only eight men. Um, and we look at why, and that's uh, actually right here. Um, you know, 200 oldest people, just look really at the last two. This is very similar to the overall life expectancy, isn't it? When you look at the difference between men and women, maybe two or three years, in this case, it's exactly three. But you know, men do live a little bit less than women, both among the general population and among the world's oldest people. Of course, there are some times where it's useful to, to compare gender cohorts. Um, so let's just go ahead and one more thing to consider real quick is when we look at, the, um, at this population, one thing we should remember is that the average year of birth is 1900. Uh, and one reason for that is a lot of the oldest uh, men in this list were recent, recently validated supercentenarians, people born around 1910, a little bit after, in some cases already deceased, um, but their median year of birth is 1900. So think about that in a few minutes. Uh, and let's just start with alcohol consumption. Um, and, and just one other thing real quick, all these categories, we have response rates of at least 80%. We're taking a lot of information, we don't just get it straight from them, but from media reports, their families, past research projects, we get it anywhere we can. So all these categories are ones that we can, those groups I mentioned, we have at least 80% response. 
So in this case, the 200 oldest people, alcohol consumption. Those headlines that we showed and what a lot of you have seen online, you're probably thinking there's gonna be a high number, but it's not. It's 10.5%. And one reason is because NHANES says that moderate wine drinking for religious purposes is an exception. Those people are not drinking to relax. They're not drinking for fun. It's a religious purpose, it might be a small amount, and when we take those folks and their daily glass of wine or weekly glass of wine away, really this is something that you probably expect more when people live that long. Um, let's look at family upbringing, going back a long time, over a century for some of them. Um, for super centenarians, we look at their childhood as well, and we wanna ask them, we wanna quantify the qualitative, not just have you, did you have a good childhood, we wanna ask some details, and we can get details about this as well from others. So take a look at this. The 200 oldest people, out of all of them, 84.1% grew up to the, at least the age of 10 with both parents in their household. Um, and we're talking about, it, you know, Natalie made a great point about how not just they were going to war, their fathers would go to war. Um, you know, the life expectancy was much less. There were people who died, you know, their mothers could die giving birth to their siblings. And still, this is a pretty serious situation. You know, so what questions can we ask from this? What resilience are people getting by virtue of having this kind of stable childhood? Um, now let's look at something different, something where we're comparing women versus men, age at first marriage. This is where I want you to please remember the 1900 median year of birth. So when you look at this, this might not really draw too much attention today. Uh, median for women at age 25, first marriage um, for men at age 28. For people on average born in 1900, that is ancient. And that is something that when we look at US census data, both of these numbers are about four years higher than the US census data for about the 1920s, because that's when we're looking at it. You know, 1900 born, 1920s married. Um, so this is something that we look at as very statistically you know, consistent. If we take it not median, but mean, that number goes up higher. Um, let's take a look at number of children real quick. Uh, for the 100 oldest women and 100 oldest men, again, using median um, here, you know, two for women, four for men. Doesn't sound that odd. You know, two and four are both a little bit, well, two especially, a little bit smaller than those numbers were back then demographically, but look at the difference for a second. We heard a little bit today about the you know, theory of aging as an accumulation of damage. Um, one thing that was pointed out to us with this data, what is childbirth doing or pregnancy doing? Is that adding a ton of damage? Is that helping people age faster? Because for some reason, female supercentenarians don't tend to have a lot of children. And that's again, something that's very statistically evident um, as we look at these things. And one other thing that's very statistically evident, um, this is Lucille Rendon, uh, also known as Sister Andre. She was a nun, uh, very public about her faith. But let's look at spirituality. Um, and this is a number you're not gonna see too much in any studies. Um, out of anyone who comments on it, out of the response rate, so to say, 100% profess spiritual beliefs. And that's, you know, in this case, she's Catholic, but this goes to, to Shintoism in Japan and folks who go to shrines even after the age of 110. It, it's cross-cultural. Um, now, when we look at, once again, the 1900 birth date, religion was more common then than now. It's gone downhill a little bit, but we're also talking about people who have outlived everybody close to them. If they had a spouse, they outlived them. Their parents, many of their children, many of them have had really tough lives. And so when they're being interviewed about this, and every single one unanimously who comments on it is reporting this, that's a very interesting takeaway that we have. Um, and so look, stats can really only tell part of this story. Uh, and we really urge all of you to get to know the world's oldest people better. Um, one thing we've done and been pretty quiet about it, that longevequest.tv is just a, a fancy URL for our YouTube channel, but about an hour and a half of footage and, and we, we do a lot more because we, we look at these folks as, in some ways, I, I heard Martin O'Day say earlier about, we may not want it enough with longevity and, and life extension. Um, and maybe one reason why there's not that demand collectively is because there aren't so many good examples of people enjoying old age. Um, so we urge you to go and, and look at longevequest.tv to see how they are today and to read about their biographies. These are pretty extraordinary individuals and the stats are one thing, but these people really amaze us. Mm -hmm.